It's time for us to talk tax and taxation. And this morning, we're going to be delving back into the issue of tax exemptions. And uh, to help us to break it down even further um, is Dr. Alex Ampabing. He's, with, he's a specialist, um, fiscal policy specialist with um, Oxfam Ghana. And uh, he's here, right here with us. He's going to help us to get into it. Good morning, Alex. How are you doing? Good morning. It's good, good to have you back. Good to be back. All right. So, pushing. Um, what, what more do the viewers need to know and appreciate mm -hmm. about tax exemptions? Okay. Well, I think the starting point perhaps is to revisit our conversation in the last time. Okay. About what exemption really means and why we need it. Um, last time you were talking about exemption being a kind of concessions uh, or taking away in part mm. or completely from the payment of tax uh, of an individual, an entity, or a particular transaction. So it depends on how you see it. In other words, tax exemption is a deviation from our existing tax laws, which mm. allow somebody or an organization not yeah. to pay the taxes they're supposed to pay to the country. Mm. It might not sound so scary, looking at the definition, but then when you, draw, you bring it down to the figures, then you go to know that over the years, Ghana has been giving a lot away. Mm. Uh, one thing I will probably say before you continue is that our position as a civil society organization is not the fact that tax exemptions are not good. Okay. Far from that. Tax exemptions are good if they are properly managed, if they are properly monitored, and if they are properly reported periodically. So what you want to see is that if you're given an exemption, asking an organization or individual not to pay tax, the first question that should come into your mind is, what do we get in return? Mm. When you come to our case, is the, the opposite. Um, in 2010, we give away uh, a tax exemption of 392 million. Whoa. Ghana City. Hmm. The figure keep growing, growing, growing until, as I'm talking to you, the data we have is up to 2018, financial year. Uh, out of 2018, the exemption had risen to over 1,000% wow. to the tune of 4.6 billion. Hmm. And if I'll bring this into perspective, uh, if you look at the 2018 budget, you look at page 201, there's an appendix called Appendix 6. Mm. The Appendix 6 of the budget tells you the kind of government priority projects, okay. which includes the NAPCO, the Free Senior High, mm. the One District, One Factory, okay. uh, the housing projects, investment in railway. If you put all this together, the budget allocation for 2018 was 4.5 billion. <laughs> okay, this is interesting. So it is. So you're saying that if we hadn't exempted all those people from tax, and we had collected the 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 the, the, the tax we should have collected from them, we would have had enough money to cover all of these That's exactly areas the point. For as, a year. as of 2018 wow. budget statement. So the point I'm trying to raise is that if anyone has access to the document or mm. you can go to the Ministry of Finance, uh, I think it's mofeb.gov.gh. Okay. And then you go to the publications. If you has a, uh, if you get access and click on the budget statement uh, and go to page 201 on the appendix 6, then you know the severity of the mm. issue we are talking about here. Okay. The good job was that the president recognized the need uh, for this. The minister got uh, to know about the need, uh, or his attention was drawn to the need to have the exemption reform. Uh, if you go to the budget statement for 2017, mm. uh, paragraph 799, okay. the minister, sorry, 2017 budget, okay. 2017, paragraph 799, okay. what the minister realized was that the exemptions was becoming too much. So therefore, he proposed that the going forward on import duties, nobody will get an import duty exemptions. Okay. So you pay upfront, and then you apply for a refund. Mm. Then they'll be able to check 
whether you're entitled to it or not. To me, that was an excellent move. He followed that up in 2018 budget. Again, if you have the 2018 budget statement, mm. uh, paragraph 770. Okay. He repeated that uh, the initiative they piloted 2017 was useful mm. and that going forward, this is going to inform the conversation around the exemptions. There was a push from the IMF about the need for us to reform our exemptions, mm. which was good. Even though we don't need IMF to tell us how much we're yeah, losing exactly. as a country. Yeah. But then the IMF push came in. We needed to get out of the IMF bailout. So what happened? Just a year ago, uh, the president at the State of the Nations address uh, did make 2019 some... SONA. Yes, on okay. the 2019 SONA. The president, realizing the, the, the challenge mm. with the exemptions, and his statement was that if we keep the exemptions at the rate we are going, yeah. uh, by 16 years' time, half of our internally generated revenue will be given away in the form of exemptions. And that's correct. Mm. Because if you look at from 2010 to 2014, yeah. sorry, to 2018, we've given away exemptions that have grown up to 1,000%. Actually, okay. it's almost 1,001%. All right. So let's take a look at what the president said at the State of the Nations Address in 2019. Revenue mobilization poses the biggest challenge in the management of our economy, with the tax exemption policy in particular proving to be an Achilles heel and a growing menace to fiscal stability and revenue generation. In the last eight years, tax exemptions in respect of import duty Import VAT, import NHIL, and domestic VAT have grown from 392 million CDs, that is 0.6% of GDP in 2010, to 4.6 billion CDs, that is 1.6% of GDP in 2018. These figures do not include exemptions from the payment of corporate and individual income taxes. Concessions on tax rates, petroleum tax reliefs, customs tax exemptions enjoyed by diplomatic missions, and waiver of processing charges at the ports. If we continue at this rate, in less than 16 years, half of Ghana's revenue base will be given away as tax exemptions. Mr. Speaker, this is not sustainable. And we intend to do something about it, to reverse the trend by introducing suitable measures that may disrupt the easy and comfortable arrangements that many have become accustomed to, but which we have to take to ensure that we have the firmest of foundations for the economic takeoff that has escaped us. All right, so you heard the, the president speaking at the State of Nations Address at the beginning of last year. Um, so, the, the issue of um, the exemptions, we, we have a bill, mm. okay, it's in parliament, but it's not been passed into, into law yet. Yeah. Um, what's, what's the challenge here? If it's mm. so important and we can see how much revenue we can accrue from these exemptions we're giving, why are we not passing it into law? And that's my challenge. To me, I'm very happy that uh, CTTV teaming up with Oxfam and civil society organizations to push this agenda. Because to me, I would describe the exemptions as a financial galamse for Ghana. Hmm. If you come to the, or, or a fiscal galamse, if you come to the fiscal uh, regime of Ghana, the exemptions is our galamse because it's eroding all or majority of the resources that we could as a country be able to raised to finance our development. The challenge has been, I think, the push. Okay. Just as we push all together to get something done on mm -hmm. the Galamse, I think the time is up for other media houses to join City TV and City FM in pushing this agenda because this, the, the, the issue has gone past something you should sit on a desk and talk about. Uh, I would take it from uh, the challenge being, one, we are no more with the IMF. Um, at that point of going for the IMF, it was a condition mm. that you need to 
reform your tax exemptions okay. before the pro during the program. Mm. So there was a need, the urgent need to push for it. Now there's no IMF, so you've been left on our own to push. So this is the time for us collectively keep pushing the pressure. And like we're demonstrating with the figure on the Appendix 6 of the 2018 budget. These are real figures. Mm. And this is what the exemption could have done if government had passed the bill. Uh, going forward, I believe what is holding us back is because of some personal interests. There are, I mean, the government might be sitting somewhere, CSO is sitting somewhere, but in between us and the lawmakers mm. are the deal breakers. They are the people who, one way or the other, are benefiting from the exemptions. And these are the people we need to keep, keep pushing. So our message passes through the deal breakers and then gets to the government. Okay. That personally, I believe there could be some individuals benefiting one way or the other. Mm. Therefore, the exemption not being passed. G but, give, give, give us a sense or an example of how an individual or an entity can benefit from the fact that exemptions exist. Well, one thing you should know is that when, when you have exemption regime, mm. the taxes that you have to pay, you don't have to pay everything or not pay anything at all. Okay. And there are, remember, these corporate bodies are run by individuals. Mm. Those big corporations and multinational yeah. businesses and Ghanaian enterprises or big companies that join the tax exemptions mm. are run by Ghanaians or people who have Ghanaian influence. So if my company has to benefit from low tax payment or no tax payment, then I will need to do anything to influence the government mm. or to influence policymakers to make sure the bill remains a bill. Because when it becomes an act, that's the time I'll start losing revenue. Okay. So definitely there are interest individuals in the whole chain. So how do we move from sitting on this desk for the government to know that if we pass this bill, this is how much you're going to get. And mm. that's why we're putting in the figures. And if you look at the, uh, the data we were sharing earlier, and the president's speech confirmed, we moved from 392 million in 2010 to yeah. 4.6 billion. I'm just waiting to see what the difference is going to be by the time you get mm. to uh, uh, 20, yeah. uh, 20, 2020 or 2019 yeah. data when it's published. That's the reality serious. is scary. It is very, very scary. Yeah. So it's about government realizing that it's not always the time we go out asking for money. Mm. There are times reforms could bring us the revenue you need. Yeah. And I don't see one single reason why we should hold on to not pass on this bill. Mm. There is so much to gain in passing it. Okay, so let's look at the areas where you feel we can have reform. Uh, what sorts of reform? Um, and then the issue of, you know, you can, a lot, I'm sure other countries also have exemptions, but why are ours so high? What are the causes? I think the, the, the starting point with this whole exemption Start with sometimes the fragmented laws we have in the country. Okay. I mean, we have, uh, for example, we have the GIPC, uh, Ghana Investment Promotion Act 2013, mm -hmm. Act uh, 865, Section 26, uh, 2D, uh, and then 4, actually empowers the G Ghana Investment Promotion, uh, Ghana Investment Promotion Board, mm. to one, uh, suggest. Invest, uh, in, in, what do you call it? Incentives. Mm, okay. Uh, in other words, they can recommend which areas uh, the country should look for in granting exemption, which is not bad. Uh, if you follow it down, I think up to E or one of uh, under four, section four, uh, 26.4, four, it actually empowers them to negotiate exemptions. I see. That's Ghana Investment Promotion <clears throat> Act. <throat> we also have some government uh, ministries and departments, and especially the finance minister, who is entitled to grant exemptions. Okay. We have the ones that can also come from the president. Meanwhile, we have a constitution that says on uh, 1992 constitution, uh, Article 174, mm -hmm. actually allow only parliament to be the body. Wow. So then the question is, where do we go from here? The starting point should be Let's put all, consolidate all the exemptions, uh, laws or policies or whatever across the various divisions or arms of government 
and give the power to the, to, to, to the parliament. Yeah. GIPC can recommend. The Minister of Finance might see the need to recommend. But I believe no exemption should go without passing through parliament, uh, parliament for approval. That to me should be number one. Uh, the second part is also, uh, uh, that explains the growing exemption, mm. is also the fact that we don't kind of have uh, a way to monitor. The exemptions are all scattered. So even the 4.6 billion figure we are given yeah. are what we have. So can we start having something hmm. like an exemption register? Okay. Where every single exemption we are able to track, yeah. who is enjoying what exemptions, just like we produce report on our annual debt, yeah. position yeah. during the budget. Yeah. Can we also produce an exemption report as part of our budgeting process? To me, that's number, uh, number two. Mm. And also number three is the, uh, again, come back to the power uh, 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 the president and the other government divisions enjoy. Um, I think the, the monitoring, obviously, I've, I think I've come yes. to, I've, I've, I've talked about the monitoring yes. being yes. one, the laws being yes. all over the place, mm. lack of monitoring, mm. and also the absence of sunset clauses. Okay. We have some exemptions that are running for many years. Who is monitoring them? Okay. To see, are we getting value for money? Mm. If the exemptions are moving in, out, in, out, when you say and they are not monitoring. When, when you say sunset clause, yeah. you're referring to the fact that there's a deadline to how long you can go with the exemptions, right? Correct. That's what it Correct. means. Okay. Because, for example, if you are given an exemption mm. to, say, operate in a particular location of Ghana yeah. up to 10 years, by the 10th year, who is monitoring? And even in between, are we monitoring that the exemption we are giving you, we are getting benefit in return? Mm -hmm. Remember, you give the exemption because you believe you the exemption will give you something better. Yeah. But we have a situation where some exemptions might move on for years mm -hmm. and nobody is actually monitoring. Yeah. So we need an exemption register to track this. And then crucially, something that's happening within the free zones. We have the laws within the free, free zones enclave that uh, if you're within the free zone, only 30% or less of your produce mm. should be sold to the local market. 70% should go abroad. Okay. Who has been monitoring this? Okay. That's number one. Number two, we call something in tax uh, fly by night. What most of these companies will do is that they will be operating, so if they get 10 years in exemptions. Year one, year two, year three, they go to year nine. When the exemption is about to expire for them to start paying taxes, they wrap up, disappear, mm. come back the following year, on a oh. as a different entity, oh, and then wow. start the exemption regime again. Again, I see. So, so you see, the system is like that. Until we become very watertight on the exemption, for example, by introducing something like an exit tax. Mm. So, if you enjoy the exemption up to the ninth year, if you don't get up to the tenth year for you to start paying any exit, yeah. then you have to pay taxes equivalent to exemptions you have enjoyed. Okay. If you don't start introducing some of these mechanisms to regulate. Uh, areas like the free zones. Yeah, this problem will keep will keep will keep happening. Okay, so you're saying that let's keep the free zones be Absolutely. because we need them. Yes, right. 100%. But we need to introduce sunset clauses. Yes, and one. monitor them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's one of the so or if you can give us an example of some of the the cases that you know of? I mean, you don't need to mention specific names or anything, but just a description of, you know, some of the cases that you know of where people have actually exited a system, having benefited from years of not paying any tax, yeah. and then they come retain later as a new entity, you know. Um, it, it happens a lot, and I think a good example is normally around the hotels. I see. You know, some of those hotels enjoy exemptions under different names. Mm. And I'm sure you, you all know this. The next morning, you come back, they are being repainted with a different color and they oh, appear wow. as a different hotel. Wow. So when you start seeing this, these are some of the triggers. I'm not saying always the case yeah. that a company changing name and repainting a building is equivalent to mm. uh, dodge tax, uh, tax dodging. But it's a typical scenario. And there have been lots of cases where they get to the sixth year, seventh year, eighth year, yeah. when they know the exemption regime, they are going to be exhausted. Uh, the amount they're enjoying. 
They just wrap up, come back with a different name. So to me, one, we need to make it a case. Mm. As all civil society and the media house, uh, we have the hashtag now moving, uh, which is the pass GH exemptions bill. Okay. Pass GH exemptions bill. It's time we take the conversation to the altar. What we are asking is simple. The bill is there. It's not like we're going to do something new. Mm. The minister realizing the need, fed into the president's speech, realizing that we need to do something about this. Yeah. The president came in, uh, right after the president, the minister came with the bill before parliament, April 2019, mm. and the bill is still there. So pass the GH exemption bill is something we should all push for it. Mm. Let them know that one, exemption is good. We are not saying abolish all exemptions. What you're saying is that we are losing more than we're giving as a country. Okay. But some of them, you cannot justify. Okay. Look at the hotels, for example. Some of them are enjoying what they call the strategic investment mm. uh, exemptions, which I don't know what that means. F which will run into millions of Ghanaian cities with the reason or some of the excuses that they are going to create jobs. But then you look at how many jobs can a hotel employ mm. Mm. that it should enjoy millions of exemptions. Yeah. So the cost-benefit analysis of each single exemption is important. We need an exemption register. It's okay. something that, just like you can find out about debt situation, mm. yeah. go to the Ministry of Finance website, you can find out our, our debt situation. Mm. The same thing, we need to have an exemption report. Okay. Because this is a huge revenue we are losing. So as part of the minister presenting our budget, we need to add that as part of our budgeting process, okay. where you have an exemption, annual exemption report, which mm. captures all the exemption we are losing, and crucially, what it is that we are giving back. Yeah. And also, Parliament, to me, should be the only body to grant exemptions. Mm. Other government departments, the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, all these bodies, obviously, they work in coordination. They can recommend. But when they get to the point of passing the, or giving out the exemption, it has to go through Parliament for it to work properly. To me, that I think is a is the right thing to do, and uh, uh, going without an exemption register is like mm. <laughs> I just give it to you, whether it work or not. <laughs> <laughs> As you call it, it's my back case. Yeah. You don't you don't need something like that. Yeah. You don't need, and crucially, most people say, "Oh, every country is giving exemptions." We are not. We are not far away from saying exemptions are bad, mm. but let's give out only if it benefits Ghana. Yeah. Not just giving out because we feel like just giving out an exemption. Mm. Mm. What, <clears throat> what would you consider, um, before we, we go on, um, remember that the hashtag is Breakfast Daily. We're still um, discussing tax exemptions. And the tax exemption hashtag is Pass GH Exemption Bill. Okay, hashtag pass GH exemption bill. And uh, send us your messages if you have any questions. Plus 233-550-585832 is the number to send us WhatsApp messages on. Now, in terms of pressure and influencing, um, you know, any people or persons or entities, um, there's always a weak point. In terms of getting this bill passed, what would you consider to be that pressure point where we should apply the most pressure and it will get the, this bill passed? I think just like we all did for the galamse, mm. and therefore I said this, uh, the, the tax exemptions is a fiscal galamse. So if we all realize as a country, if the civil society, if the media, all of us realize that the, uh, our fiscal galamse fight now is mm. passing the exemption. Mm. And we all come together and push the agenda. Another point is we have to, I mean, politicians don't like just going there and making noise. <laughs> but that's why we're using those data in mm. the budget. Mm -hmm. That's why we went back to the president's own promises. Yeah. That's why I went back to the minister's, uh, Minister of Finance's speech for budget 2017, mm. paragraph 799, and then 2018 budget follow on to paragraph 770. Okay. These are things he said. We tried something, it worked mm. in 2017, reported in 2018. The question is, why don't we keep up? Yeah. So the pressure point to me is about one, unity in the fight. 
the fighting coat. As in all it, of us understanding of what us is at stake. Exactly. Okay. And it's not something, as, as you saw from the figure, these are not uh, uh, pennies, mm. but these are billions. There's Look, a lot if of I, money. If I'll come back to even this year's budget. Yeah. Mm, this year's budget, to look at the allocation for free senior high school, mm. was $2.4 billion. Okay. Then we have the allocation for the roads. We said it's a year of road. Mm -hmm. Our full budget for the road this year is $2.2 billion. Yes. So $2.4 billion, free SHS, mm. $2.2 on roads, it add up to $4.6 yeah. We give away $4.66 billion. So even higher than our roads hmm. and our free senior high school budget. This is the severity of the issue. And sometimes it's heartbreaking to watch yeah. uh, that this is money that potentially, even if not all, the justifiable ones will stay. But definitely there are gains to be made if you can review the exemptions. So it's about putting the figures to the, to the, to the lawmakers mm. for them to understand. I want them to come out as to why the bill is still sitting in Parliament. I really want to know, because it's passed through the various, it passed through the various consultations, it's passed through the various processes to get to where it is. Mm. The question is, if we had passed the bill, according to the finance minister, in October, if we had passed within the last quarter, we'll have made over 160 million Ghana CD. This is not my mm. statement. So you look at it, then the question is, why? When the bill was proposed, the question yeah. is, even if you can get it passed by October, mm. in the last quarter, we will stand to make over 100 million Ghana city. Why haven't we passed the bill? Mm. I want to appeal to the president that the promises he made in his sonar, which we just played to them, that he should please push. We want to tell the finance minister he did the right thing by proposing the bill and getting it to where it is. But the job is not yet done. We are at the final stage. We are ready to work with them. If there's any support they think that civil society organizations can do to yeah. get the bill passed, we are ready to work with them. But we know that this money could go into agriculture, this money could go into education, this money could go into our health care, this money could go into supporting the pro poor in our communities. Mm. We can't see people uh, struggling in the streets. Yeah. We can't be taxing uh, somebody in Makola making 50 Ghana. Mm. When a corporate, a corporate entity making billions a year walks away tax-free, mm. unedited. Mm. It's time for us to review every single assumptions. Those that benefit the country, we keep them. Yeah. Those that we believe have uplived their, your, their usefulness, we review them. So to me, the process should be simple. L after having the assumption register, let's produce annual assumption report. In the annual assumption report, we need to determine three things every okay. year. One, which exemptions are we going to continue? Which exemptions are we going to modify? Okay. Because environment will change. And the last point, which exemptions do we have to we abolish or discontinue? Yeah. If we do not have this and produce it annually, it's not an ad hoc event. Mm. It's something that we have to monitor. And if I give you a good example, in 20... Eight, 2008, when the world credit crunch happened, uh, UK introduced what they call the annual investment allowance. The annual investment allowance was that it was a form of exemption, kind of more of an accelerated depreciation mm. exemption. What it meant was that if your organization that invested up to 500 million, yeah. you will be able to deduct before making tax payment. Mm. Now, in 2009-10, 11, getting to 12, when the country was getting off the recession, yes. they reduced from 500 million pounds to 250 million, to 50 million, to 25 million, to the point where okay. they scrap it all over. Mm. So the point I'm trying to make is about modification, mm. assessing what should be continued and what should be discontinued yeah. is, 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 to me, what determines mm. a very good uh, exemption regime. Okay. We can't just give away and pretend all is right mm -hmm. and keep losing the revenue. All it's right. time for us all to act. And I ask everybody in the media space, uh, within the religious organizations, mm. uh, private individuals, and crucially the media, you yeah. have a massive role to play in pushing this agenda. 
the battle starts now to get exemption bill passed. We need that, and I'll say we need that before December this year. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've been speaking with uh, Dr. Alex Ampabe, who is a fiscal policy specialist with Oxfam. And the hashtag is pass GH exemption bill. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share with all of your friends. This is Breakfast Daily on City Team. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Join us for breakfast daily only on City TV.